So time now to take you through the Sunday papers. Here with us to review them are the author and broadcaster Emma Wolfe and the former editor of the Daily Star, Dawn Neeson. So very good morning to both of you this bright and early Sunday morning. Nice to see you both. Um, we're going to kick off with the front page of The Observer, aren't we, Emma? You've um, picked this out in particular. Um, this is uh, Gordon Brown uh, writing in the paper. Uh, he commissioned some... Uh, research into the effects of the cost of living crisis on, on, on the poorest people in this country. So what's the story telling us? So yeah, this is the former Prime Minister, as you say, Gordon Brown, weighing into the cost of living debate. Um, and he's actually urging both the current Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, and both Tory leadership contenders to set an emergency budget now. He's saying, you know, this cannot go on. He talks of, um, can we if, if we don't set an emergency budget, we condemn millions of vulnerable and blameless children and pensioners to a winter of dire poverty. Um, it's actually, you know, really quite strong stuff. And obviously, former prime ministers are not encouraged to sort of give advice to, you know, their their, um, their predecessors, or sorry, their, their followers. But I think that Gordon Brown is well respected. He's known as an anti-poverty campaigner. He's known as a humanitarian. And his advice is, you know, this is a financial time bomb. This will explode for families in October once those energy price hikes go up yet again. And I know we'll be covering that in some of the other headlines as well. Um, this is going to send shockwaves through every household and push millions over the edge. And he's saying, you know, at this time, yes, of course, there's a leadership campaign going on. And what we're seeing is this is emerging as one of the sort of dividing lines. This is something that the two, that Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak can argue over. But he's saying they need to come together at this time and sort something out, start to tackle the cost of living crisis, which households are feeling now and are going to be feeling so much, so much more severely once, once the winter kicks in and people actually need to put their heating on and things like that. Uh, Dawn, what do you think about this? Because clearly people want to, to hear what might be done to help them when they're facing their bills going up and they're really worried about paying them. But on a practical level, do you think even if the various parties did agree to come together, that they could form some kind of compromise agreement? That The two leadership candidates seem so far apart at the moment on this. Well, this is, I think, where we are now, Anna, isn't it? I mean, sort of like, you know, when you've got, you know, the Tory party with Rishi and Liz tearing one another apart, the, yeah, most of us out here are thinking, well, the chances of the, the separate parties working together is, is, is just not going to happen, is it? I mean, it's quite shocking where we are at the moment because you've got, you know, Liz and Rishi arguing like kids in a playground. That's getting quite nasty. So I just think all of that here, as you say, Anna, we're so worried about sort of like paying our bills and, and where we're going with this. And the, the winter is just sounding dreadful by the, by the second. Um, I, I, they, they don't, none of them seem to be concentrating on us. And I think the chance of them working together to help us are very slim indeed. That'd be a lovely idea, but where we are at the moment with politics, I try to think what's going to happen come the winter. Yeah, so we, we may well have to wait until one of them wins and, and we find out what their policies are in detail. And let's move on though, shall we? Uh, Dawn, you wanted to talk about the hosepipe ban story on the front of the Sunday Telegraph. Well, actually, Anna, you can take your pick from any of the papers today. Uh, we have actually got water warnings and droughts on pretty much every single page one today. I picked this one because this is uh, George Eustis, who's the Environment Secretary. And he is the first public intervention by a minister on, on the, the drought we're currently facing, which is, as you've been discussing uh, so well, it's a dry spell since 1976. Uh, Southern Water have already um, installed a house, house, house pipe ban even, and, um, and Welsh Water have got a little bit down the side as well, and others are looking to follow suit. It's, 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 it's pretty bad wherever you go. Um, but, I mean, the hose pipe ban, Anna, but it's, it's, once again, it's like, as we were saying with politics just now, it's like the public seem to be the ones getting the blame for this. We're the only ones that can be doing something about it. It's like, you know, some of the advice this morning is, all right, a hose pipe ban, OK? Don't be a kid's panting ball. Don't wash your windows. Don't wash your car. Be proud of having your dirty car. But then some of it, Anna, it's like, use the same mug all day to avoid washing it up. Use dry shampoo in your hair like that. And wash with a wet cloth rather than having a shower. I mean, again, all the emphasis is on us doing something when the reality is that three billion litres of water are wasted a day, a single day, by the water companies. That's 1,180 Olympic-sized swimming pools. We always quote Olympic-sized swimming pools, don't we? Big swimming pools, basically. And it's actually, they're wasting so much water. If they spend half as much time 
preparing the leaks rather than telling us, giving us ridiculous advice on how to save water, we wouldn't be in the situation in the first place. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, and Emma, do you agree with that, 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 uh, that if this is really down to the water companies, or should we all take some individual responsibility? I know there's another story on the front of the, the Sunday Times about this, isn't it? Again, a bit along the lines that, that Dawn was saying, uh, saying this is one way that you can save water. What's, what's that story about? Yeah, no, I mean, Dawn took the words out of my mouth. The, the, the real culprits in this, in terms of major water wastage and water shortages, are the big five, six energy, um, sorry, water companies, who are, as we read a few weeks ago, the leaks of billions and billions of, of, of litres of water every day are being leaked from these companies. They need to sort out the leaks. Of course, every person, every single one of us has a role in this. Of course, we should be thinking. We should really be thinking about our water usage, about our energy usage. I think we're a very wasteful society. I think we've become very complacent. But things like, so, so this, so on the front of the Sunday Times, we have a, the headline, plan to cut water waste, spend 60 seconds less in the shower, which is all well and good. There are other ways you can save. They want the official target set out by DEFRA with Ofwat are to save around 30 litres a day for each of us, for each person's daily water consumption by 2050. So that's in about 30 years time. So once again, we've got a short term immediate crisis and we've got very, very slow, sluggish response. The government, it's one of these issues that the government hasn't really grasped, hasn't really planned for. And we're now being told, spend one minute less in the shower. So 60 seconds less in the shower, or you know, don't put your dishwasher on three cycles a day, which I'm not sure why anyone would need to wash wash the dishes three times a day, or six flushes of the modern lavatory. And of course there are things we can all do. We've had the driest July since um, since records began, and yeah, we're facing we're facing a sort of drought, we're facing hose pipe downs. But really, the planning and the, the you know the infrastructure needs to be looked at. The planning needs to be longer term. We can't just go on like this having a hose pipe van bought in and you know water shortages going on and on and on until twenty fifty. Yeah, OK. I think you're both agreed on that one, aren't you? Um, and in fact, we're going to return to the Sunday Times for the next story that you wanted to talk about, Dawn. And this is um, that the headline is Young Mother Was Jailed for Two Years for Having an Abortion in Britain. Yeah, and, and it's, the shock, it's the two words in Britain that are the shock on this story, aren't they? Now? I mean, it's an appalling story. She's a, a young mum. She's only got a little, a little and a, a toddler. She's 20 years old when this happened to her. Basically, she's in a very abusive relationship. Um, she fell pregnant for the second time. Uh, when she broke the news to her other half, um, he, he literally beat her up again. And goes, she was so desperate to sort out her situation, she took a, one of the morning after pills, we call it, but a bit glibly, because, I mean, they, it's far more than that, isn't it? Thinking she was eight to ten weeks pregnant, she wasn't. She was much further on than that. She just didn't realise. So she ended up, I'm not going to go into the details, Sunday morning, but... Her health really did did suffer going through this abortion at home. She was taken to hospital, and Anna, she was arrested while she was at hospital and literally taken straight to the police station for basically what is described as an illegal abortion. I mean, the abortion rules in this country are, are quite difficult to understand. I mean, they're not cut and dried, but because she was further than eight to ten weeks, she was not meant to use that. So the long and the short of the story is that it's a young lady in this country in desperate circumstances really, really desperate, because no woman chooses to do this. Uh, she thought she was acting with prison, but she ended up uh, being sentenced to two years in prison. Now, this is a very, very vulnerable young woman, and it just, and the, the fact that we need to, you know, with everything that's going on in America, and with the Roe versus Wade, and some states now literally making abortion illegal. Um, so we had the story of a 10-year-old girl having to travel from one, a rape victim, 10-year-old girl, having to travel from one state to another to have an abortion because her state had made it illegal after this latest ruling. But, I mean, the thing is, this is, this is the UK, and this is a 20-year-old vulnerable woman being sent to prison for having an abortion. And there is a, it's, not a, it's not a single uh, alone woman in this one. There's another case coming up, and of another very young woman who is facing the same stuff. It's, it's absolutely tragic. We must leave it there, Dawn, I'm afraid, because we are out of time. Um, but Dawn and Emma, we're going to see you again in an hour, so lots of time to go through more stories then. Thanks both for now. Stay with us, top stories next.